Let's say we're given an array of n positive integers and we want to count the number of contiguous subarrays that have a sum of x. So here, for example, we might have the length of the array n be 5, and then the sum that we want to find is 7. So that's indicated by what we have here. And then our array could contain the elements 2, 4, 1, 2, and 7. So in this example, the answer would be 3, so that we would have three contiguous subarrays in this array of n positive integers that have a sum of 7. So let's see how we got that. Well, we could have one subarray be 2, 4, 1, and then we could have another one be 4, 1, 2, and then our third one can just be 7. And so that way we've gotten three subarrays. Now, how do we go about solving this? So here I've just pasted in the steps that we're going to use. So first, we're going to create a prefix sum array, and that's going to help us actually calculate those sums because we won't have to keep calculating each sum in each range every time we check a new range. And then we're going to use a sliding window in the next step, and we're going to go from right to left, and this sliding window is going to help us count the number of subarrays. So we're going to have some sort of lower bound for the sliding window and an upper bound for the sliding window. And using the prefix sum array, we can calculate the sum in that window. And if the sum is equal to what we want, we're going to increment our count and slide the entire window left. So we'll decrease the lower bound by one and the upper bound by one. Now, if the window sum is less than X, then that means that we have too little amount of numbers in our window. So we need to extend the window. Well, in this case, we can just decrease the lower bound. And if the lower bound is zero, then that means we're going to stop because we cannot decrease the lower bound anymore. And then if the window sum is greater than X, then we decrease the upper bound. And this is because we have too many elements. So we have to reduce our window so that we don't have too many elements to find the sum of. And if our upper bound is zero, then we stop here too. Now, the reason this algorithm is going to work is because we have an array of N positive integers. So the key thing here is that we have positive integers. So because we have positive integers, when we create our prefix sum array, we're going to end up with an array that's actually sorted. Just because every time we add another positive integer, we're just increasing. If we were to add in negative integers, that's actually going to change this up a little bit. So this algorithm in particular is only going to work for positive integers, but it can be adapted for negatives as well. So let's figure out using these steps how we got this output. So we'll first start by creating our prefix sum array. So let's just write out the numbers that we have first in our array. So we do start off with two, and then we have four, and then one, two, and then seven. And so in our prefix sum array, we're going to end up creating, so we'll just start with zero here. And then we're going to add zero plus two is two, and then two plus four is six, plus one is seven, plus two is nine, plus seven is 16. So this pink area right here is going to be our sums array. Now that we've created our array, we can slide our window from left to right. So let's just draw a line here. Now we'll start with both our upper bound and our lower bound at the end. So we're going to indicate the lower bound as exclusive and the upper bound as inclusive. So here I'll start off with a lower bound that is right here and my upper bound is here. So I'll be covering this range. So with this range, we find that our sum is going to be 16 minus nine, which is seven. And seven was what we wanted. So now we're gonna shift the entire window left. So now I have this window, and now I have nine minus seven, and that's going to be two. Well, two is two less, so now I have to decrease my lower bound to make it bigger. So I'll extend this, I'll keep this here, and now I have nine minus six, but that's just three. So it's still too small, so I'm going to extend it a little bit further. So now I'll move here, and now I have nine minus two, which is seven, and that's what I wanted. So now I'm gonna shift the entire window left. So I shift this here and I end up at zero and seven. So this range is gonna cover that and I take seven minus zero and I get seven. And now I'm going to shift the entire window left. Well, the lower bound is gonna stay where it is because it can't move any bit further, but the upper bound can go one less. So here we'll go from here to here and we find that we have six. Well, because we have six, we need to decrease the lower bound somehow, but we can't decrease the lower bound because we're at the very beginning. So this is where we're gonna stop. So we see that we have seven, seven, and seven. So this means that we're going to have three contiguous subarrays that have a sum of x. All right, let's go ahead and code this out. We can start by defining our function. We'll call it subarray sums. So def subarray sums, and then we'll take three parameters, n, x, and r, 
So n is just the length of the array, and x is the target sum, and then r is the actual array. Now inside here, we can start by creating our prefix sum array. So we'll say sums is equal to 0 times n plus 1, because we're just going to have the extra element at the beginning of the list. And then we'll say for i in range length of r, we'll say that sums at i plus 1 is equal to sums at i plus r at i. All right, now that we've created the prefix summary, we can start our sliding window traversal. So we'll start at the end, we'll say low and up, and we'll say that low is equal to n minus one, and up is equal to n, because these are the last two elements. So low is one before up, and up is the very last element. Next, we should create a count variable that'll help us maintain our total count. So count is equal to zero, and then we'll just create a while loop. So while not low is equal to zero, and up is equal to zero, because if they're both zero, then we know that there's no way that we can go any further. And then we have to check our conditions. So if sums at up minus sums at low is equal to x. If that's the case, then we increment count because we found another subarray that works. So count plus equals one. And then we just decrease both low and up. So here we're actually going to say low is equal to max zero and low minus one. And up is equal to max zero and up minus one. And the reason we say this is because there could be a point where we're trying to decrease low or up and we just can't because our boundary is all the way at the beginning. Next, we're going to say elif sums at up minus sums at low is less than x. And if it's less than x, that means we have to decrease low. But if we have to decrease low, we can only do that if the lower bound is not at zero. So if low is equal to zero, then we break. Otherwise, we can just say low minus equals one. And then our else clause is going to be the case that this difference is greater than x. And if it's greater than x, we're going to decrease up. Well, we can make the same check. If up is equal to zero, that means we can't actually decrease it. So we break. Now we may not actually encounter this condition because that might actually be accounted for by line seven, but it's good to have it there. And then we can just say up minus equals one. And finally, we can return count. So that wraps it up for our code and we can go test this out. So here we'll just say print subarray sums, and then we'll provide the parameters that we worked with. So n is going to be 5, x is 7, and then our array is going to consist of the elements 2, 4, 1, 2, and 7. So let's run this, and we see in the console that we get 3, just as expected. So that's it for this video, and I hope this was helpful.